Hi everyone. I'm going to present uh, Faraday's experiment and the concept of electric flux. Um, this is my first video and hopefully it will be a series on topics of electrical engineering, uh, especially electromagnetics, so electromagnetic compatibility, maybe we get into some RF microwaves, antennas, etc., things like that. But today we're just going to start with uh, this, uh, this wonderful experiment that Michael Faraday performed around 1837 on the concept of electric flux. So first I'm gonna just uh, show you what I have on the whiteboard and then I'm gonna go through some slides and uh, we'll see where we get. So looking at the whiteboard here, what we have is two concentric spheres and these spheres, uh, there's a, a charge of a positive Q on the center sphere. Uh, it's a metallic sphere and uh, the outer sphere is also metallic and there's a dielectric in between the spheres and the spheres are concentric. And so the charge, the charge on the outer sphere, on, on the inner sphere, produces a, uh, an electric field in its vicinity uh, in accordance with Coulomb's law. Um, a charge establishes an electric field. And what Faraday did is he, he charged up an inner sphere to a certain known charge, and then he took two larger hemispheres and clamped them around this uh, inner sphere without touching it, and he had a dielectric material in between the two spheres. And then he momentarily uh, discharged the outer sphere by touching it momentarily to ground, and then he... Um, and then once he disconnected the ground, he very carefully using insulating materials so as to not disturb the charge on the outer sphere, he, he unclamped the outer sphere, out the, the hemispheres, and he measured the charge. And he found that the charge uh, on the outer sphere uh, was the same magnitude and opposite in sign as the charge on the inner sphere. So if it's positive, if the charge on the uh, inner sphere, for example, is eight coulombs, then the charge on the outer uh, sphere was found to be negative eight coulombs. Um, and from this, he came up with his concept of electric flux. And the big thing about this experiment is that um, this was true regardless of the kind of dielectric material uh, that there was in between the spheres. So just going through the whiteboard we have here, we have, first of all, Coulomb's law uh, that says that the force on one charge due to another charge is equal to uh, Q1 times Q2 divided by four pi epsilon r squared. And this is uh, analogous to the law of gravity that says that uh, the force on one mass due to another mass is equal, is proportional to the products of the two masses divided by r squared. Um, as in gravitation is with uh, electric uh, force and so Coulomb came up with that and uh, that's where we start. So this inner, when this inner sphere is charged up with a charge of positive Q it produces a, an electric field. Um, now the field within a conductor in electrostatic conditions is zero. Um, the field in general in a conductor would be uh, proportional to the current density through the conductor, but when you have current density, you have moving charge, and then you don't have electrostatic conditions. Um, and in a perfect conductor, you have no electric field anyway. But in an electrostatic conditions, um, the the charge, the free charges are all on the boundary of the conductor and not on the interior of the conductor. Uh, so there's no field on the interior of a conductor. Um, so the electric fields on the induced by the inner sphere uh, would produce a uh, would would draw the the electric charges the negative charges the electrons on the outer uh, sphere toward the inner part of that conductor, um, leaving the positive cations on the other side of the outer side of the outer sphere. Uh, by themselves, so you have a positive charge on the outer sphere. Then when you connect that positive sphere to ground, electrons flow 
onto the outer sphere, neutralizing that positive charge. And so the outer sphere is left with a net negative charge. Um, and so from this, uh, Faraday came up with this idea that there's some kind of displacement flux going on, which we now call electric flux, which uh, he, we, we use the symbol psi, and that psi is equal to Q, the Q being the charge on that inner sphere. Uh, so psi equals Q, um, and that's the electric flux. Um, since the area of a sphere, the surface area of a sphere is four pi times r squared, then it's easy to come up with the electric flux density when you have a nice symmetrical case like this. Uh, so the electric flux density would be psi divided by four pi r squared in the radial direction. Uh, and so that's in, es in essence what's going on here. And now I'm gonna take you through the slides. So a little background on Michael Faraday. Faraday was born in September 22nd, 1791 in London. He was not, um, his family was not well off. Um, he received very little formal education. At the age of 14, he became an apprentice to a bookbinder and he read many books, especially books on chemistry and physics. He also was a devout Christian um, and I've, I've read that uh, because of his, his uh, Christian faith and um, kind of this, the, the humble spirit with which he kind of just conducted himself, he expected to fail quite a bit in his scientific investigations and, and he expected that he would have a need to persevere through failure. Um, and he made many great scientific discoveries, uh, which we use all the time now um, for RF and electricity and motors and all kinds of other wonderful things. So as we're, I was talking before, Faraday's experiment, you have basically four things here. You have this, this, um, you have this inner metal sphere that has a radius, say, of R, and you have an outer sphere with a radius of B. Um, uh, they're both metallic, and inside you have this uh, between the spheres, you have this dielectric. And so this, the inner sphere is given a known positive charge. The two metallic spheres, uh, hemispheres that were clamped around it, were clamped around this dielectric um, in this inner sphere. The outer sphere was momentarily discharged. And then the larger spheres were separated carefully with insulating material so as to not disturb the charge and the charge was measured. So the positively charged inner sphere establishes this electric field um, around it that's uh, oriented in the radially outward direction. Um, negative negatively charged electrons, free electrons on the outer sphere were drawn to the inner boundary of that outer sphere, while the positively charged cations that were more or less immobile um, were, were left where they were. And so you get this like positive charge on the outer boundary of the outer sphere and this negative charge on the inner boundary of the outer sphere. Um, and then uh, there's no net, um, there's no net charge and no net field inside the conductor itself. So talking a little bit about what's going on in the outer sphere, if we zoom in on like a cross section of the outer sphere, uh, let's say to the right here, you have the inner part of the sphere and to the left, you have the outer part of the sphere. Then the electric field established by the, the, the charge on the inner sphere would draw electrons toward it and the cations uh, would more or less stay put. And so you get like this positive net charge on the, the outer side of the sphere and this negative charge on the inner uh, boundary of this of the the outer sphere. Um, so we have the inner boundary of the outer sphere that's negatively charged. We have the outer boundary of the outer sphere that's positively charged. Okay. As a result of this, we have uh, these electric fields that are both um, between the spheres in the dielectric. We also have this electric uh, flux that's emanating 
outside the outer sphere as well because you have these positive, positively charged cations on the outer part of the, of the sphere and so you have these, these positive charges here. Um, so in, let's look at this one thing at a time here. So on the inner sphere we have a charge of Q. Uh, in this case you can say eight coulombs but let's just say positive Q coulombs. So the total flux emanating out of a closed surface containing the inner sphere alone would be psi equal to positive Q. So if we drew like a little circle here or a sphere, a Gaussian surface as we would call it, um, around this inner sphere, then the total flux emanating out of that sphere would be equal to eight coulombs. Okay, now if we drew the, uh, a Gaussian sphere going around the outer sphere, we would also find that the, 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 the um, electric flux would also be eight coulombs. Um, and this is due to the fact that we have positive Q coulombs on the outer boundary of the outer sphere, negative Q coulombs on the inner boundary of the inner sphere, and positive eight coulombs on the inner sphere itself. And so the total charge enclosed would be still be eight coulombs. So you get this electric flux of eight coulombs that's emanating out here. Interestingly, if you look, if you draw like a, uh, a Gaussian surface through the interior of this, out, the conductor of the outer sphere, then you would note that there's no, um, the total charge enclosed here would be zero coulombs because you have negative eight coulombs on the surface of the inner sphere as Faraday confirmed in this experiment and you have positive eight coulombs on the inner sphere itself. So negative eight plus eight would be zero. So you have this negative Q plus Q equals zero. Okay, now, then you have a ground. A ground is essentially in, um, a vast source of free electrons. And so when you bring a ground close to this outer sphere, the negative charges on the ground and the positive charges on the outer sphere are attracted to each other by columbic forces. And so you see the electric fields, the flux, all kind of directed from the positive charges on the outer sphere to this ground. And as it gets really close, then um, it gets concentrated. And then when it finally touches, what happens is the electrons flow onto the outer sphere and effect, effectively neutralizes the, the outer surface of that outer sphere. Um, and, and with those extra electrons there on that outer surface of the outer sphere, then the, the charge on that outer surface is zero. Um, but you still have this negatively charged inner surface of the outer sphere. So now removing the ground, you're left with the positive Q coulombs on the inner sphere and the negative Q coulombs on the outer sphere. And so what uh, Faraday did is he removed the two hemispheres carefully with insulating materials. He unclamped it and he measured the charge on the outer sphere and he found it to be the same magnitude but the opposite sign as the charge on the inner sphere. And from this, he concluded that there must be some sort of displacement flux between the two spheres, and we call this electric flux today. Um, so psi, the electric flux, equals Q, the charge on the inner sphere. The electric flux and this charge have the same uh, units, coulombs. Um, and Faraday confirmed that this is the case, whether whatever the uh, dielectric material is here. He played around with different dielectric materials, and he found this is always the case, that this is independent of the dielectric material that you use. And from this concept, we can also derive the, uh, the concept of electric flux density. Again, the surface area of a sphere is four pi r squared. So given the symmetry of this problem, it is straightforward to determine the electric flux density. You simply divide the total electric flux by the surface area of the sphere, and you get psi over four pi r squared in the radial direction. Um, note that in this case, with all this symmetry, the electric flux density is invariant with theta and phi, that is the, the spherical um, angles, whichever direction you're, you're, you're coming from or going toward, um, but that it's inversely proportional to r squared, as you would expect, because the further out you get, 
then the lower the electric flux density would be and the units of electric flux density are coulombs per meter squared. Uh, so this sums up uh, Faraday's experiment and his discovery and um, his conclusion that uh, the electric flux emanating here is equal to the charge enclosed and that's true regardless of the dielectric material that we're, that we're using. Uh, from this, uh, you can develop Gauss's law. Gauss basically uh, addressed situations that are not symmetrical, and he, he was very uh, mathematically robust, and he came up with a, a very mathematically robust way to express this in non-symmetrical cases. But the, the physics here, the simple concept, uh, Faraday confirmed by experiment. Um, that's all we have for now. Hope you enjoyed this. Let me know if you like this and I'll see you next time.